fellow citizens, the United Nations Security Council has not lived up to its responsibilities, so we will rise to ours. Saddam Hussein and his sons must leave Iraq within 48 hours. Their refusal to do so will result in military conflict commenced at a time of our choosing. I stand before you today not as an expert, not as one who pretends to have all the answers. I am simply an American and a servant of the American people. Uh, Lieutenant Watata joined the Army voluntarily, and he actually joined after the Iraq war had started. My humble opinions today are just that. I realize that you may not agree with everything I have to say. He's definitely in the wrong, refusing an order because you don't agree with a policy decision is not acceptable for an officer or NCO. Since he is an officer, he's not allowed to speak out or go to protest. He's being suppressed. So, so the only way he can refuse is not to go to the war and not to fight in an illegal war. Today I speak with you about a radical idea. It is one born from the very concept of the American soldier or the service member. We got into this war based on lies and total deception and that a terrorist act set the stage for frightening the country to go do something about it against the terrorists. That's what's different about this war. And the bastards got away with it. They were able to sell this bullshit. It became instrumental in ending the Vietnam War, but it has long been since forgotten. They think this is another Vietnam and they're dead wrong. This is not another Vietnam. This is a war for freedom and civilization against the forces of tyranny and evil. When you sign up, you have an obligation to follow the orders of the officers appointed over you and the commander in chief, the president. Many Iraqis can hear me tonight in a translated broadcast. If we must begin a military campaign, it will be directed against the lawless men who rule your country and not against you. Your fate will depend on your actions and it will be no defense to say, I was just following orders. Following. The idea is this, that to stop an illegal and unjust war, the soldiers and service members can choose to stop fighting it. When the legality and morality of a war is under challenge, which is the higher duty for a soldier? What does an American soldier do when the orders of his commander-in-chief, the President of the United States, seem to violate the Constitution, the balance of powers within government, and international laws to which the U.S. is a signatory? What does a soldier do when faced with the possibility that he is being ordered to commit acts of war that may later be deemed to be criminal? These are the issues raised by Lieutenant Aaron Watata, a Japanese American from Hawaii. He says that his oath as a soldier binds him to the Constitution and the law of the land, and that President George W. Bush has violated the Constitution and broken the laws both in instigating and carrying out the American military invasion and occupation of Iraq. Cause there's something about us that we don't want to have to face And there's a killer instinct deep in this American race Just ask anyone who's been on the other end of that leash And they'll tell you Cause there's something about us these are questions that have never been easily answered. For generations, people have been trying to put a stop to war. Yet the 20th century was filled with some of the most violent, horrendous wars known to humankind, most of which involved invasion and occupation. 
Jonica's marching home again. European powers fought each other in a struggle over colonial possessions and economic control during World War I, leading to 10 million deaths. U.S. President Woodrow Wilson took the lead in trying to create a League of Nations to set international standards that might help to stop such aggressive military interventions, but his own Congress refused to go along and he failed. Unfair boundaries drawn by European powers in the Middle East and elsewhere, and onerous conditions heaped on the losers of that war, especially Germany, and renewed struggles to control the oil and other riches of the colonized world led to an even more deadly conflict. Over 60 million died in World War II. After that, the U.S. again helped to lead an effort, this time successful, to create a United Nations. Housed in New York City, the purpose of the United Nations would be to stop military aggression and conflict by setting rules to make wars of aggression illegal. Preemptive war to stop aggression was allowed if the UN Security Council authorized it. No nation can go it alone in starting a war. There has to be a reason. There has to be a reason. There the US, after World War II, prosecuted German leaders for crimes against the peace, for war crimes, and crimes against humanity. According to the Nuremberg Principles, it is not enough to say, as German leaders did, that they were only following orders. Who would ever do a thing like that? Finally, the U.S. signed on to the Geneva Conventions, declaring that if war happened, all prisoners of war have the right to be treated with dignity and respect, and not be subjected to the humiliation, starvation, and brutalization against captured prisoners that occurred in previous wars. According to Lieutenant Aaron Watata, the U.S., under the administration of George W. Bush, broke all of these laws. The danger to our country is grave. The danger to our country is growing. We cannot wait for the final proof, the smoking gun, that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of Al-Qaeda. Even France, Germany, and Russia broke ranks with the Bush administration over a UN resolution authorizing the use of force against Iraq, a resolution doomed by the UN Security Council. President Chirac said it very clearly. He would vote no to a resolution authorizing at the present stage the use of force. with his hands on the wires and his head in the sack the man in the hallway with his neck tied to a leash line the cigarette grins of the soldiers given at the high sign well I wish I could believe it when they said it was an aberration just a few bad apples and an otherwise smooth does Lieutenant Watata have the right to refuse what he believes to be illegal orders from the very beginning from time I, I submitted my letter of resignation seven eight months ago uh, I knew that I was going to go to jail I knew that was the ultimate consequence so yes most likely I will go to jail uh, we will try to argue the legal merits of the war uh, that it is illegal that it is immoral uh, and that offers that officers and soldiers of conscience should not be forced or compelled to do something that is illegal and immoral does he have the right to speak his mind on the issues involved in the war the U.S. Army says no and will present its case in a court-martial that could send Watata to prison for up to eight years. Many Americans agree. An illegal order is a specific order to perform specific actions. For example, if a commander orders you to burn down that church, shoot those prisoners, those are examples of illegal orders, and you, in the military, you have an obligation to disobey them. But well, I 
Report to this location and go with your unit, as assigned by the Commander-in-Chief. That's not an illegal order. And now, when it's time to actually go to Iraq and put that training into practice, now he says he doesn't want to go because now he says it's an illegal war. If he felt that way, he never should have signed the mil uh, to sign up with the military. He never should have joined. Refusing an order because you don't agree with a policy decision is not acceptable for an officer or NCO or private in the United States military. The truth is that nobody forced him to join the military. We do not have a draft in this country, and when you don't have a draft, there's no such thing as a conscientious objector. Others, however, say Watada is upholding the best tradition of peaceful protest against unjust wars. The ACLU has filed an amicus brief on his behalf, asserting that in making statements against the legality of the war, Watada was exercising his free speech rights as a citizen in a democratic society. Others back up his charges that the war itself is illegal. In many instances, specific policies of the Bush Jr. administration constitute ongoing criminal activity under well-recognized principles of international law, United States domestic law, and the U.S. Constitution, especially the Nuremberg Charter, the Nuremberg Judgment, and the Nuremberg Principles. Depending on the substantive issues involved, those international crimes typically include the Nuremberg offenses of crimes against peace, crimes against humanity, and war crimes, as well as grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions of 1949, the 1907 Hague Regulations on Land Warfare, torture, enforced disappearances, assassination, and murder. According to basic principles of international law and U.S. Army Field Manual 2710 of 1956, all high-level civilian officials and military officers in the U.S. government who either knew or should have known that soldiers or civilians, such as mercenary contractors or the CIA, committed or were about to commit international crimes and failed to take the steps necessary to stop these crimes or to punish them or both are likewise personally responsible for the commission of international crimes. Well, he, was, he was an Eagle Scout. <laughs> he was an Eagle Scout. If you're from the Boy Scouts, you know, they do take the oath that um, they're not going to lie, they're not going to cheat, um, they're going to be honorable, and um, that's exactly what he's doing. Very patriotically, he joined the military, thinking that he wanted to do something to defend our country. And, um, of course, we know the rest of the story, that he soon found out uh, that uh, the Bush administration was lying to the American people, lying to the, American, uh, to the world lying to the military about what was happening in Iraq and when people lie like this and then cheat what do you tell your kids it's okay to lie and it's okay to cheat he cheats by saying that the Constitution doesn't apply to him well it's dangerous taking a stand but it's dangerous running away Sometimes you have to face up to the danger There is just no other way But there are such beautiful dreams I have seen in the eyes of a child If I can just make one little difference And I think my life is worthwhile And I'd rather be gone the American soldier must rise above the socialization that tells them authority should always be obeyed without question. Ranks should be respected, but never blindly followed. Amen. Awareness of the history of atrocities and destruction committed in the name of America, either through direct military intervention or by proxy war, is crucial. They must realize that this is a war not out of self-defense, but by choice for profit and imperialistic domination.
The oath we take swears allegiance not to one man, but to a document of principles and laws designed to protect the American people. Enlisting in the military does not relinquish one's right to seek the truth, neither does it excuse one from rational thought, nor the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. I was only following orders is never an excuse. In this brief documentary, we have presented the charges against Lieutenant Watada through a court-martial proceeding, and we have also given Lieutenant Watada and others the chance to make his case. You be the judge. One generation ago, the peoples of the world asked themselves, where were the good Germans? Today, a generation later, the peoples of the world are likewise asking themselves, where are the good Americans? Petroleum Bonaparte. Hey George, what's the body count? Does anybody know? When the brown and foreign do you bother or do you just let them go? And when the coffins come back home with our daughters and our sons, you think the families give them a medal and ask for another one? It was kind of cold that way, isn't it, George? It's a that way right from the start. Petroleum Bonaparte. That's right, George. Petroleum. <laughs> 